Good morning, it's me, Zach the Russian. Uh, oh wow, look at that American flag, actually. Did not notice it. Uh, here's my bike, here's a motel I stayed for last night. The weather actually sucks. And I'm planning to go to a really interesting place. Uh, it's called Goldsboro. It's a, it's a city in, in the North Carolina, but I'm not really interested about the city itself, but I'm more interested into the place where in 1962, an American aircraft, I think it was a B, B-52, like a bomber, it basically crashed. Uh, and on the board of the airplane, there were two nuclear bombs, which were way more powerful than the ones that were dropped at uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Still, up to nowadays, there is a nuclear bomb, uh, something about 50 meters below the ground, basically engraved in the freaking land and it's crazy i want to go there and check it out um, we'll see if it's going to be possible since the weather is not the, the best and yeah i don't really know if i should ride it right now but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes it should be better in a couple of hours i'll keep you posted in 1961 an american military plane b-52 broke up in the air and dropped its nuclear payload which consisted of two thermonuclear bombs mark 39 each one is 260 times more powerful than the bomb called Little Boy that was dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. The bombs landed 10 miles away from a city called Goldsboro, North Carolina. One of the bombs successfully parachuted and got stuck in the trees. Mark 39 bombs had four mechanisms to prevent it from detonating and when the army wanted to use the bomb, they would turn off all the four mechanisms to make it ready. Alright, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere, just parked because I saw a, a dog and I think it, it has a color, but I don't really see the owner, so I'll try to find the owner. Hey, look at it, look at it, it's so happy. Hey, look at you. It wants to play, I see. Yeah, my face looks so jammed. I have I have no, um, like, treats or something to give it to, to him. I want to get it close to, so I could read the number or, like, a something on the collar i know in the u.s usually people put something on their collar so it will be easier for you for the owners to find a dog hey hey come here good boy good boy good boy good boy <laughs> so playful hey so playful as far as i know in the u.s usually you're not supposed to let your dog just run around so i think there is something wrong with it I don't think it's just owners who let the, the dog to on the run. I don't see any any information. <laughs> Why is he jumping out like that? Yeah, I see the name. Hey, come here, come here. I I just I just can't read anything on the collar. Like it's there, but I see that there is a name or something. It's like in gray, not in gray, but like you know, written on metal. But <laughs> I just can't do anything. Look at this house. What is going on? Here's my bike, by the way. Look at that. Maybe he lives there. But that would be really weird. Like, if he lives in this house. Oh, but I really cannot do anything, like... Yeah. I think he lives there. Alright, well, I hope, hope I'm right. Because he just entered the house. I'm actually not far from Goldsboro, from that place where two of the bomb bombs landed, crashed. And I actually was surprised, but some of the nuclear parts of it, like of the bomb, are still, um, I think it's about 180 feet below the ground, which is crazy. Um, so I really want to go there and try to, at least to, to put my feet on this piece of land where a nuclear bomb landed. So let's go. In 2013, the documents about this accident were disclassified. It became known that the bomb that parachuted and got stuck in the trees was one preventing mechanism away from detonating when it landed. A parachute of the second bomb was not activated and the bomb just crashed in the ground. It collided with the ground at around 700 miles per hour, which caused it to disintegrate. The bomb had become deeply buried in mud, and it required three days of excavations to recover its arm safe switch. Excavations had to be stopped due to floodings of the worksite with groundwater. The uranium core and other parts of the second thermonuclear stage remained at the bottom of the swamp. 
The United States Army Corps of Engineers purchased a 400-foot, which is 120 meters diameter, circular easement over the buried component. In case you would like to visit this place, I'll have the coordinates to it in the description below, but I myself go and explore. All right, I think I'm here. I just parked somewhere here and this little place where... Well, basically, that's the place. Um, I think over there, there is a forest. I'll try to make it there, even though there is a bunch of uh, something that's being grown. Uh, looks like peas, to be honest. Um, I don't really know, like, should I go and talk to the owner of the property? Because to make it to the forest, I got to actually cross somebody's property over here. And I guess it would be nice to do that, but I don't really know. If somebody's gonna be home since it's Sunday and you know it's uh, church time, well, it's not really far. It's like two minutes walk. Should I do that or should I not? I don't really know. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Well, any anyway, it's kind of crazy to think that it could be potentially the place of a nuclear bomb is basically exploding, and that's crazy. Like you know, this explosion. Um, from what I read, if that bomb, Mark 39, would explode, everything in the diameter of 8 miles would be a dead zone. And the rest of the criteria, like the rest of the factors of a nuclear bomb has been launched, it's actually just not, not nuclear, no, it's a thermonuclear bomb, which is even stronger. I think this bomb, Mark 39, is 260 times is more powerful than the one that was dro uh, dropped on Hiroshima. And it's crazy, like, you know, it's literally somebody's backyard over there, like there is a house, and basically, yeah, a whole bomb, two bombs launched, um, crashed here. One, one parachuted and one landed uh, right deep into, into the field. So let's go and check it out. I just want to put my my feet on it and we'll see how it goes. You know, I decided to go and try to talk to the owner of the land because I don't really want to trespass. And you know, this motorcycle being parked over here looks really suspicious. So I don't really want anyone to shoot me out there. So I'll just go try and ask. And if I get rejected, well, it is what it is. But if not, it can be a really good story. So let's go. Hello, is anyone home? Doesn't really look like somebody lives here, to be honest. Yeah, it looks really abandoned, but... I mean, who knows? There is a car park out there. It should be, should be alive, should be, should be nice. Yeah, so far, nobody really opened or, you know... I see the lights in this house. Maybe, maybe I should <laughs> have more luck in this house, asking if that's their property and if I can actually go there. We'll see, we'll see. That's kind of that's kind of worrying to be honest. But hey, why not? Hello. Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, sorry to bother you. Okay. Uh, I was wondering. I'm traveling by motorcycle uh -huh. uh, through North Carolina, and if you, I know there is a plane crash in 1961 happened. Yeah. Almost in your backyard. Yeah. So I was wondering if I could just go there and kind of explore it a little bit just to see it. Well, if, the th I don't own the land. Oh, it's the neighbor? No, no, so nobody lives in that White House. Um, the actual owner lives about 30 minutes that way. Oh. Um, so yeah, he doesn't live around here, uh, so I can't really give you permission. Yeah, um, I see. Do you have his number by any chance or something? I, let's, I do not off the top of my head. Mm. Um, All right. And I don't think I have it in my phone either. Mm. Um, all right, I got you. But I mean, if if you want to, I mean, you can. It's in that um, well, it's in that field. If you um, yeah, turn there is right a turn here, left. where the trees are. Yeah. About. about yeah, yeah. About uh, 30, 40 yards back to the left of that. That's uh -huh. where it is. Um, it's got beans planted over right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I've seen the turn over. Got there. you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean if. I can't tell you either way. I yeah. wish I could, but... <laughs> All right, I got you. But she doesn't live there, right? No, do what now? She doesn't live in this house, right? Like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. This is... Yeah, I just wanted to, like, literally, like, go over there for five minutes and just, you know, such an interesting place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's a cool place. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, nobody. Yeah, we don't own it. And then um, the pe there's nobody that lives in that White House. That was my great grandparents. They were. Oh, really? They lived in that house when the plane fell. They were actually in it when the plane wow, fell. Wow, that's yep. crazy. That is yep. so crazy. Wow. All right, so it's been better than I was uh, expecting it to be. Basically, anyway, I'll I'll go and explore. He told me that. Uh, the guy actually opened the door, he told me that his grandparents used to live in this white house, which is abandoned right now, when the plane crashed, imagine? He told like, all, always there is a bunch of people coming here filming, so it should be fine, I'll just go and explore. This is exciting, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, I've never been to a place where a nuclear bomb basically crashed or long launched or anything like that. So that's quite exciting. The only things that I need to pass all those peace fields, which is going to be a little bit hard, if possible, I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry for the peas. I don't really think I'm gonna break a lot of them in any way. <laughs> you know, they've got plenty. I don't really know if there is any road I can go. I don't think so. I think that's it actually. Wait, is it? Is it the place? I don't think that's the forest, but I think that's the place. All right, so I was mistaken. It's not that forest. It's literally this small piece of a forest. That's where the bomb literally launched. And it's literally next by the house. It's literally somebody's backyard. And it is crazy. And it's literally over there. And I know the reason why, why is it like this? Like a small piece of forest in the circle like this and around there's a bunch of peas somebody fills. Well, basically because uh, the government, they bought this piece of land. I'm still trying to make it. It's not really far, so it's not gonna be a problem. I found myself like a path. And yeah, let's go. Let's go. I feel like somebody has already been here before me because I can see this line like a trail. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Getting closer and closer. And yeah, that's basically it. Wow, look at that. Wow. I'm entering a nuclear zone. Yeah, basically that's the place. Literally somewhere over here, a nuclear bomb landed. <laughs> It's just crazy to imagine that I'm literally standing at the place where a whole nuclear bomb, which is po more powerful than Hiroshima's bomb in like 260 times. This is crazy. And it's, well, basically, yeah, that's just a piece of, uh, a small piece of forest. We'll see if we can see any nuclear mushrooms <laughs> growing out there. Well, I can see some... What's that? As far as I know, there is no level radiation because like this nuclear piece of uranium got so deep on the ground. And I think because of the like the, flota uh, the flotation of water um, on the ground, it already kind of got washed away into a different field and nobody knows where it is. So, yeah, but till nowadays, there is still parts of the bomb inside on the ground. And right now, it, it looks like an ordinary forest. But beneath it, there is a huge level of concrete, like really thick concrete. So the peop people could not, uh, you know, excavate it themselves and try to look for it. Because people are crazy sometimes, <sighs> like me, <laughs> today going to this place. Uh, anyway, it's just, you know, it's just such a cool place overall. Like, I feel, look at that, it's just a small little forest. And, well, I can tell why, you know, it got so deep underground because like the land here, it's not like swamps, but it's not like a solid solid land at the same time. You know, a Russian uh, has been to the place where one of the six, five plus one, one of the six uh, nuclear bombs that US lost throughout its history. And I have been to one of them. Uh, as far as I know, two more were lost in Pacific, one somewhere in Florida, um, and the rest of them, I don't know. And here is the one that they've lost somewhere deep underground. And the second parachuted somewhere not far away from here and got stuck in the trees. That's crazy that the second one that was parachuting before, 
you launch a nuclear bomb, I've learned that there are a couple of mechanisms that prevent it from being launched right away. And at that second bomb, which launched it with a parachute, with, with a parachute, parachute basically, three out of the four mechanisms were activated, and only one mechanism was not activated that kept it from exploding. Which is crazy to imagine. If it would happen, I wouldn't be staying standing here right now. It would be all like freaking uh, Chernobyl for a couple of years, for a couple of decades, I, I think. Anyway, uh, it was me, Zach the Russian. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. I'm gonna try to make it home to Merle Beach. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy my new vlogs, me doing crazy stuff, changing my personality into a biker. Actually bought this leather jacket uh, from a guy for 40 bucks. And he told me that this jacket is older than me. Yeah, so now I look like a badass looking guy, um, biker, but I'm actually not. I know you, you know that I'm the sweetest person on earth. Hope you guys enjoy your day. As usual, freedom to Russia, uh, peace in Ukraine, and see you in the next videos. Bye.